so dear students in last two three sessions we are discussing about accounting for various costs to take a very very brief recap in the beginning we discussed about what is cost accounting then cost classification and then we are looking at accounting for the costs that is recording of various costs so in the cost classifications we had discussed one important classification that is direct and indirect which is very relevant for recording so do you remember what was discussed as a direct cost as name suggests it is direct in a sense it is exclusive or it can be specifically related to a particular cost center such costs are known as direct costs so in step number 1 when you are trying to account for the cost first you try to segregate all costs into direct and indirect and that is known as cost allocation if you remember so in cost allocation all the costs which are direct are charged to the cost centers directly and there is a common pool which is known as overheads which cannot be charged that remains step number 2 is apportionment do you remember what is apportionment so in apportionment this common pool is charged proportionately to various cost centers on some reasonable estimate like rent may be charged based on floor space and so on what is the stage number 3 so step number 1 is allocation step number 2 apportionment step number 3 what it is do you remember it is reapportionment because the cost which is collected at a service cost centers needs to be charged again to production cost center for example expenses or canteen or expenses on maintenance they are charged to production cost centers so allocation apportionment reapportionment number 4 is absorption so you remember now what is absorption in absorption we essentially charge the costs from cost centers to cost units or the products based on some logical basis so we have discussed that one of the popular basis is machine hour rate so if you have the total cost at a cost center and you know the number of machine hours you divide the cost by machine hours and get a machine hour rate so every product passing through the cost center will be charged a particular rate based on the machine hours consumed in that department or the cost center so absorption is a process where the costs are charged to the products or to cost units so this was step number 4 step number 5 is under or over absorption so actual costs when they are available they are compared with the absorbed cost because absorbed cost are based on the budget they are predetermined so they are compared with actuals and the difference is under or over absorption i hope you have understood up to this and we have done up to this now let us go to stage number 6 now having calculated the under and over absorbed amount what will you do with it so what can be done if you remember we will go to the example which we discussed last time so we had discussed about this company d and b in the last session so here you can see that for company d there was the under absorption to the tune of 25000 so actual cost was 4 lakhs our system is to charge the cost at 75% of actual labor cost so 5 lakh into 75% so we have charged 375 there is under absorption to the tune of 25 now in the accounting system the cost recorded is 4 lakh whereas to the customers you have charged only 375 so 25000 will remain as under absorbed now question is what will you do with this 25000 who will bear this cost should you charge more on those same products 
or should it be charged and borne by the company as a common pool that decision will have to be taken and that is our stage number 6 so what do you feel what could be the right way i hope you remember the sum otherwise you can take a look at the sum again and think over what can be done so as far as department d is concerned the budget was 3 lakh actually is 4 lakh no problem but of that 4 lakh also since the budgeted labor cost is 4 lakh in 275 percent so i could absorb only sorry budget uh, actual labor cost is 5 lakh so in 275 percent so i was in a position to absorb 375 whereas the actual cost incurred is 4 lakh so what to do with this 25000 one possibility is instead of 75 percent which is the rate we are charging now revise the rate so that the balance of 25 also can be absorbed are you getting so because we charged at 75 percent we ended up with the balance of 25 so one possibility is instead of 75 say calculate at 80 percent so that will take care of the difference this method is known as supplementary rate so 75 percent is a basic rate which is predetermined charge extra by following additional or a supplementary rate of course supplementary can be negative also you can see in case of product company b there is a under absorption of 250000 so if you look at company b they follow a rate of 2.5 per machine hour so these are their budgeted figures uh, so 5 lakh was the budget of machine overheads and 2, 2 lakh was a budget of machine hours so 2.5 was the rate we applied 2.5 on the actual machine hours which were 3 lakh so absorption was to the tune of 7 lakh 50000 actual overheads are less they are only 5 lakh but the absorption was 750 so there is a over absorption of 250 that means the rate which of 2.5 which they charge is excessive so they may have a negative supplementary rate say if they find that instead of 2.5 they could have charged only 2 rupees they can have minus 0.5 as supplementary rate actual are different huh? i am just giving you an example so supplementary rate could be positive or negative but what i am trying to convey is one way of making the correction is to have a supplementary rate can you think of any other way of correcting it there are three ways totally so one is supplementary rate other is don't make any corrections at all in which case this 25000 which have to have to be borne by the company it will be charged to their costing profit and loss account means it is not charged to any product it will be simply borne by the company this is method number two method number three, three is you carry over this 25,000 to next period. So, these three methods are used. Now, which method is suitable in which case? I will just show you PPT so that methods are more clear to you. So, we had talked of these two methods. First as application of supplementary rate. So, this rate is calculated by dividing the over or under absorption by the actual base the second is writing off to costing pnl and third is carry forward to subsequent periods now what happens is if the amount of difference is too small there is no point in making recalculation of supplementary rate and making changes in all the cost sheets etc because amount is very small and it can be very much borne by the company so in such cases it is charged to costing pnl secondly sometimes the amount is caused due to abnormal causes let us say due to accident due to fire you cannot charge it to the customers you have to bond it so one when it is too small or one when it is due to abnormal reasons it is charged to costing pnl or it is written off to costing pnl it's called so it's not charged to any product sometimes it is due to seasonal fluctuations 
particularly when you are doing monthly calculation it may happen that in a particular month there is over absorption in the next month there is a under absorption so there is no need to charge it will simply get adjusted as you go over so in such cases it is carried forward to subsequent period now if both this is not being done supplementary rate may be used i hope the three methods clear to you but we look at the cases so i would like to go back to question number 4 which you have done please have a look at question number 4 again so i am directly going to solution so 360 was the overhead cost 180 was the budgeted machine hours so we had budgeted 2 rupees per machine hour as a predetermined rate now look at the month of april in the month of april the actual cost was 23 actual machine hours were 15 so there was a absorption of 30 so there was a over absorption of 7 if you look at the month of may the actual cost increased to 41 the absorption is 40 so there is a under absorption of 1000 so which method could be recommendable perhaps you can see that 2 rupees is a annual rate there may be some monthly fluctuation and if that fluctuation is getting adjusted we can simply carry it over from april to may may to june so on which generally it should get adjusted by the end of the year so in some cases carry forward becomes suitable if we feel that in the month of april there is too much of over absorption and it is not abnormal it is better to pass it on to the customers we may go for supplementary rate but if we feel that this is due to some abnormal cause then we instead of supplementary rate we can go for writing it off to pn so looking at the circumstances the company has to decide what method can be most suitable let us look at one more case which will make it further clear to you so this is the data again of the problem number 4 only so you have to compute over and under absorption and also find the supplementary rate so we have actually already done over and under absorption so just now as we saw 2 rupees per machine hour was the rate there is a over absorption of 1000 in may and under absorption of 7000 in april now how will you calculate the supplementary rate we have to look at the actual base which is 15000 and 20000 in those months so 7000 we divide by 15 we get a rate of 0.4664 so there is a over absorption so this rate can be negative so instead of 2 rupees which we have already charged we could have charged something like 1.53 so we will charge minus 0.46 now to even it out in the month of may you can see 1000 was under absorbed 1000 upon 20000 so it comes to 0.05 which is positive are you getting so this is how supplementary rate can be calculated and we just now discussed that 1000 if we feel is too less so rate will be also 0.05 it may not be worth it to make all the changes we can simply write it off and this is significant so we may go for supplementary rate so company has to take a call so this was about accounting for over and under absorption so i hope there is a clarity now on module number 9 we will go to module number 10 now now i think briefly you have understood what is cost accounting we have also discussed the classification of cost and we have discussed recording for the cost in module number 10 we are going to discuss about calculation of product and process cost there are two prime methods of costing one is known as job costing the other is known as process costing of course many times companies use lot of combinations of this but just for clear understanding we assume that there are two distinct methods 
and there are some special features for job costing there are some special features for process costing now looking at the nature of industry management has to take a call which is a more suitable method of costing for them as i said actually for some part they may go for process for some components they may go for job and so on so they may use a composite method but for more clarity we will look at the characteristics of both the methods and also see the advantages and disadvantages of both the methods so we are discussing about product and process cost in this presentation we are going to talk about product costing in that you have job and process costing what is a cost sheet what are the costing procedures the treatment of loss about the equivalent units which is particularly required in process costing and in the end we will discuss about operation costing so product costing is very important in financial accounting it is mainly used for valuation of inventory and to compute the cost of goods sold in cost and management accounting it is even more important because apart from inventory it is very much useful for planning controlling directing and managing of various decisions okay so uh, it is very important that we are able to get a fair cost of our own product because our decisions like pricing are based on that if we want to make a make or buy decision it is based on that we would like to definitely control our costs so we should be able to calculate the correct cost so that we can compare and control so many of the control as well as decision making uh, functions are based on right product costing now here in product cost especially in manufacturing concerns the cost for completing product becomes important and that is what is treated as an asset in the balance sheet because the stock becomes or the inventory becomes one of the important assets now as we discuss in the beginning there are two major methods for product costing one is process costing the other is job costing these are the features of process costing it is mainly used for large scale mass production of identical items so production processes here are continuous in nature you cannot trace a piece of input to output because inputs are continuously being pumped in they are getting processed together and output comes out from the factory maybe there are different products coming out from the set of processes number of inputs are going number of outputs are going so you cannot directly relate any input to output and usually the production is automated on a large scale items typical units could be low cost or small items so which industries you feel process costing is a right scenario just think of as against this there is a job costing let us say there is a i'll give you four or five examples you can tell me whether it is suitable to use process costing let us say plastics cement steel construction transportation and consultancy in which industries the process costing will be more suitable i'll repeat plastic steel construction transportation let's see oil refining which industries have characteristics suitable for process costing in large production like steel can you identify for who which customer you are making steel no it is being made through a continuous process same way in refining or fmcg say you are making soaps can you identify this soap is for which customer no certain chemicals are being put into soap manufacturing and you get soap soap cakes out of it or you may be getting other by products but there is no one to one correlation from input to output neither the production is being made for a particular customer lot of low cost items are getting produced which scenario is very much suitable for process costing here are the examples we have already discussed some of them so refinery steel paper mills and ready made garments in garment making particularly you see that both process and job is possible for ready made garment process costing is a right scenario 
in which case in garment making you have a job costing can you think of so you go to shop or mall they have produced n number of shirts let us say whatever you like you pick up as against this you buy cloth go to tailor get the shirt made as per your requirement okay both is possible which is more appropriate in process costing and which is more appropriate in job costing obviously ready made garments is through process costing and a tailor made garment is through job costing now i think the difference is clear to you so in tailor made case it is known that from this cloth this particular shirt is being produced it is being produced as per specification of one customer it's so specifically identifiable can you identify it in case of a paper is this paper being specially made for me no paper is being made on large scale i have some choices available i can choose the paper which is more suitable to me and i buy but there is it is not being made specially for my requirements of course in case of security printing or currency printing it is different but generally in a paper mill different types of papers are being made as per the manufacturer specifications so for refining steel paper mills i had also given you example of plastic cement almost all large scale manufacturing is being done mainly through process costing now let us look at job costing now in job costing what happens these are large unique high cost items they are mainly built to order they are not being mass produced and here there is one to one correlation between input to output so many of the cost can be directly traced to a particular job now can you give me examples of job costing just think of the examples one is of course i have told you in case of garment what will be the example of job costing will ready made garment be the example for job costing no because that's being mass produced whereas a tailor made garment is a specific example of a job costing like that any other examples can you think of no very job costing done apart from tailor made garments if you go to a doctor you are not well the advice he or she gives to you is it mass produced or customized definitely it is customized so a professional service is essentially being given to one customer medicines recommended may be mass produced they are not produced only for you doctor may prescribe some standard medicines which are mass produced in a factory but which medicine to take and in what doses etc that professional service is essentially in the nature of job costing because it is a customized built to a specific person like that any other examples you have what is known as designer costumes which are specifically made for one customer of course they are very costly but that is an example of a job costing any other case construction industry will fall in which one this is a very good example of job costing so if a dam or a bridge or even a building is getting constructed it is unique in nature it is not like mass produced soaps or mass produced steel steel may be going into construction of a say flyover but flyover is being built for a particular location that is why it is an example of job costing so these are the features now job costing itself can be divided into two types one is job manufacturing other is batch manufacturing in job manufacturing the manufacturing happens just one at a time or a very small volume in batch manufacturing it is in a relatively small quantities but it's not just one batch some multiple some group of products are being produced these are the examples of typical job costing applications so you have a special order printing building construction designer costumes tailor made garments or we also talked about 
professional services like customized software, repairing, doctors, lawyers, chartered accountants, they are all in the nature of job costing. Okay. Uh, can you give some examples of job manufacturing and batch manufacturing? Both are within overall domain of job costing, but there is a slight difference. So, can you think of the two? Say, you want to get some furniture for your office. What method of costing will be suitable in your office or let us say you are in a college. So, college wants benches in the classroom. So, which method will be used for the supplier will use which method for this type of supply benches in a classroom. Actually, different possibilities exist. One is process costing. So, you go to a carpentry shop, they may have certain models of benches ready and just pick up the model and order them like a ready-made garment. So, that will be an example of process costing. It is not being produced to that classroom, but they may have different varieties. Just pick up the suitable variety and order say 20 benches for that classroom. That is one. Second, it could be batch manufacturing. So, you want specific type of benches, you give a specific order for 20 benches. So, instead of making one bench, they are making 20 or 50. So, similar products, but not as large as in process costing. They are still being made for the customer, order built only, but slightly bigger lot than job costing. And job costing scenario follows where you just want one or two pieces. So, if you only want, let us say, some furniture suitable for your living room or in your house, perhaps you may hire some interior decorator and as per your specifications, carpenter makes the furniture. It becomes a case of job manufacturing. Are you getting? So, these are the various methods. Now, uh, yeah, this is one case where in non-manufacturing scenarios, the job costing is used for making up cases, programs, contracts, missions. They are customized. So, you have to use job costing. Uh, now, before going for further part, what is the advantage or disadvantage of job and uh, process costing? Can you think of the advantage? In process costing, what happens? It is a mass produced. So, relatively the cost comes down. It is not for one customer. Secondly, the costing becomes easy because there is no one to one link. You just account for the inputs, then you get the total cost. You can divide by the outputs to get the cost per unit of the output in process costing. We are going to see it. In job costing, what happens is you have one particular job which is different from other jobs. So, the inputs is going to that particular job have to be separately accounted. Take total of all those inputs, you will know the job cost. Okay, but you will have to do it 1000 times if you have done 1000 jobs. In process costing, what happens is even if you produce 1000 units which are identical, you just take the total cost divided by 1000, you get the cost per unit. Okay. So, we will now look first at the job costing. Now, in job costing as we have discussed, every job is identifiable, separate and unique. So, we have to calculate and record the inputs for each job and report them. Usually, this reporting is done in a cost sheet format. So, for one job or for one contract, a cost sheet is produced. All the costs are identified or apportioned. They are added. You get the cost sheet. So, cost sheet can be prepared for a job. Sometimes, it is prepared for a particular department or a subunit for a particular period. Both is possible. Here is a format of cost sheet. So, now you know these items like direct material, direct labor and direct expenses. So, in cost sheet, we try to calculate you have a particular job in mind or you may have some month for which you are accounting for the cost. So, the first cost is direct material. Direct material cost is mainly the raw material. 
so you take opening cost add purchases minus the closing stock of the raw material that becomes the raw material consumed in that period that's a direct material cost plus direct labor plus direct expenses the total is known as prime cost this is called as prime cost because you are able to identify those costs to that particular job so that's the first cost next what will be the cost involved for a job after prime cost what are the other costs other than the direct cost just now we have discussed them that is indirect costs or they are known as overheads so based on some estimates those overheads will be charged because they cannot be directly linked but you will calculate say 75 percent of direct labor cost as it was done in the last case or say two rupees per machine hour using some basis the overhead costs are also charged to job so now after prime cost first factory overheads are charged so you get the total which is known as works cost in this works cost opening and closing work in progress is added and reduced because there could be semi finished goods in the factory so works cost add opening less closing stock of work in progress you get the factory cost to the factory cost we add office and admin expenses which gives us cost of production at the level of cost of production the finished goods stock is valued so you can add opening stock of finished goods minus closing stock of finished goods you get cost of goods sold i hope all these terms are cle getting clear to you i'll just go back so we started from prime cost you know that you classify direct and indirect cost so direct costs are total is known as prime cost then indirect cost or the overheads are classified usually as per function so you have factory admin selling expenses etc so first add factory expenses then adjust for work in progress which will give you what is known as factory cost then add office overheads which gives cost of production then adjust for opening and closing finished goods so you get cost of goods sold to this we need to add selling and distribution expenses so we get what is known as cost of sales profit is added to get the selling price or sometimes we have cost of sales we know the sale price from the market so the difference is calculated as profit or loss of course this profit or loss is different from the profit and loss account which we have discussed in the financial accounting in financial accounting it is total for the whole company here we are doing it for one product or for one division for a particular month so is it clear now usually all the job costing is done through cost sheets so cost sheet is one of the very important statements used for reporting the costs it is also used as we discuss for a department or a cost center or for a unit for which all the costs are added to calculate the profit or loss now we will go into the second type of costing that is process costing we have discussed about job now let us discuss about process before accounting for process costing we should have some idea for accounting for losses because many times what happens is there are some inherent losses in the production processes then they are required to be classified and properly treated before going for a further discussion can you think of such inherent losses can you give some examples like certain materials or certain processes there is some loss which always happens in a production can you give some examples okay can you give some examples of processes which involve inherent losses one immediately coming to mind my mind is petroleum products you know that petroleum products are typically evaporative so if you are doing anything with petrol diesel or such products one or 2% of it may just evaporate so that is one normal loss 
or in machining processes say you are operating on a lathe some part of the material will be lost or even even a more simple example let us see you are doing uh, a tailor is making clothes uh, that is garments from the cloth you can't use the whole of it in the cutting process some cloth will be lost so in every process almost there will be some losses now how to treat those losses becomes very important because it is necessary for the costing system to decide whether these losses can be charged to the customer or they have to be borne by the company so the losses are classified into two types normal and abnormal in case of normal losses what happens is they are inherent to the process so very nature of operations require that there will be some loss they can be reasonably estimated through experience and through technical data and such losses can be charged to the customer as against this there are abnormal losses which happen because of uncertain reasons okay so actual loss when exceeds the normal it is due to abnormal losses maybe workers are careless there is a wrong design which causes more loss than what should have been normal loss so can you charge the customer with abnormal loss naturally you cannot it is because of company's carelessness you can't blame the customer so abnormal losses has to be borne by the company normal losses gets charged to the customer so for example you go to the tailor you are charged for the whole cloth there will be some cutting in the tailoring process naturally the customer has to bear but if the whole cloth is destroyed because of carelessness of the tailor then tailor will have to compensate the customer because that loss is abnormal similarly in petroleum products let us say there is a 3% loss that is normal but if there is some fire then it is because of carelessness that has to be borne by the company you cannot tell the customer that there was a fire so we will not deliver you so abnormal and uh, normal losses have to be classified and then accordingly treated now in process costing we will go for a recording part we have just now seen that a cost sheet is typically prepared in a cost job costing scenario in process costing instead of cost sheet usually the process accounts are prepared now what is the difference in a cost sheet it may be for a job in processes there is nothing like one identifiable job accounting has to be for a particular period let us say you are making steel you are not making 1 kg or even 1 ton of steel you are making hundreds of tons in a common process so essentially you calculate the cost for a week or a month and divide it by number of tons made to get the cost per ton are you getting me so reporting is of the process account i'll give you one more example in a soap manufacturing can you make one piece of soap that is one small cake of soap no you will calculate the cost for the month and you will divide it by the number of soap cakes produced so that you get the cost per cake so reporting of cost happens through process accounts in pre each process account typically these costs are charged same like in job costing you have direct material direct labor direct expenses some production overheads only difference is here it is period wise in job costing many times it is job wise now let us take one case to make it more clear to you now these are the costs for the three processes you have process 1 process 2 process 3 the direct costs they are directly allocated so they have been estimated that is material labor and expenses now factory overheads are 4000 and they are to be charged on the proportion of wages 15000 units were put in in the first process and then it goes on this is the output and the normal loss estimated for the processes so for process 1 3% process 2 6% process 3 2% these are the normal losses by technical estimate but the actual output is given as 14 550 13 500 and 13 300 you are required to make process accounts 
I will go back just think over how will you get the cost per kg or per unit because 15,000 units have been produced uh, processed put in for the processing then at the end of process 1 you got 14,500 at the end of process 2 you got 13,500 at the end of process 3 you got 13,300 which is your final output naturally you want to know what is the cost per unit now how to calculate can you think of how will you get cost per unit each unit is not identifiable. So, no purpose of making separate cost sheets for 1300, 13,300 units, you will have to make 13,300 cost sheets in job costing, which you won't need now. You will just make few accounts. So, how will you get the cost? Can you think of one very, very simplistic way is simply add all the costs, add all material, wages, expenses, plus overheads and divided by 13,300. You will get some cost per unit. It can be done, but it does not give you real proper analysis because we want to know the cost of process 1, process 2 and process 3 separately. You want to control the cost for each process. You may also want to take a decision of outsourcing sometimes. So, we want to know precisely the cost for every process and then the final cost. That is why typically process accounts are produced. So, can you think how the process accounts will be produced? So, we will make three process accounts. We will make one for process 1, then for process 2 and then for process 3. And then the relevant cost for each process will be accounted for. Okay? Is it clear? Now, let us see the accounts as they might be prepared. So, in process 1 account, as you know, Material cost was 70, wage cost was 38 and other expenses were 11. They were already identified and they have been charged to process one account. Is it clear to you? If you want, I will just go back. From here, these costs were picked. Please concentrate on process 1 right now. 70, 38 and 11. So, they have been charged first material, wages and other expenses. Now, let us go to factory overheads. For factory overheads, it was given that they should be charged on the basis of wages. Now, the wage cost as you can see is 38, 40 and 25. Now, a proportionate basis the factory, uh, the factory overheads have been charged to process 1 at 14,757. Let us see, you can do the calculation that is in done. So, you have got material, wages, other expenses and factory overheads giving you a total cost of 1,33,757. If you look at units, there was an input of 15,000 units which was given to you in this slide. Right? Now, what is the cost per unit? Look at the output and the normal loss. The normal loss is 3 percent and the output is 14,550. So, what we have done is first we have calculated the normal loss at 3 percent, 3 percent of 15,000. So, 450 cost, how much is the cost of normal loss? Right now, 0 because we have to charge this cost to the customer, nothing will come on the credit side of the account. You will not get anything from normal loss. So, in the cost column, we will write 0. Transfer to process 2. I am sorry, it should have been process 2. Now, this says process 1. Actually, it should be process 2. From process 1, the items are going to process 2. So, transfer to process 2 comes to 14,550, which was given over here. That is the output, right? So, entire cost of 13,757 has to be charged to units 14,550. So, 13,757 upon 14,550 will be the rate per unit at the end of process 1. Is it clear to you now whole process account? In this case, there was how much was an abnormal loss? 0 because 3 percent means 450 
and 15,000 minus 450 exact output is 14,550. So, there was no abnormal loss. In process 2, there could be abnormal loss. Look at the figure for process 2. In process 2, the input is 14,550, the output is 13,500 and the estimated loss is 6 percent. Now, let us look at process 2 account. Now, on the side of cost, first for 14,550, we have charged 1,33,757 which comes from process 1, no problem. Then material, wages, other expenses are just charged. You know these figures were ready and we have just charged it. Okay, 15,000, 14, 40,000 and 12,000. So, no issues. Factory overheads have been also proportionated. Look at the other side. Now, the normal loss is taken at 6 percent. Then, we have to calculate the abnormal loss which comes to 177. Because the units transferred are 13500, the balance becomes the abnormal loss. So, the total cost of the process which you can see here is 216291 has been proportionately charged as normal law, abnormal loss and as transfer to process 3. Okay, so, we will stop here because time is up. Next time again we will look at process 1, 2 and 3. To do a very brief recap, we have seen that two major methods job costing, process costing. In job costing, it is identifiable relatively small quantum of output made for a specifically for a customer. We make a cost sheet for the same. In process costing, it is a mass production. The output is for inventory not for a customer and we make process accounts for it so that we make cost per unit. In the next session, we will discuss more about it. Thank you so much.